we left off yesterday on the verge of reading an oracle about Tyre. So let's read it, the city of Tyre. For Tyre built herself a tower, heaped up silver like the dust and gold like the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord will cast her out. He will destroy her power in the sea and she will be devoured by fire. Tyre and Sidon were cities along the Mediterranean coast. This was the main merchant stop. So they built themselves a, a big old pier out into the, a big breakwater out in the ocean, 820 meters long, uh, pretty substantial. No dump trucks, they did it some other way. They reaped the wealth of all this maritime trade. Numerous times the fortress was attacked and many times they repulsed the invaders. In 722 BC, for example, the Assyrians attacked. You don't want the Assyrians to attack you. But it took them five years to get inside and subdue them. And then they were pretty brutal and pretty ruthless. Murder and violence. And then there was Nebuchadnezzar. He came with an army and he, he besieged the city for 13 years and, and finally left without anything. He was unsuccessful. He couldn't get in. Pretty intense uh, defense there inside the walls in the tower. Now at another time, the Persians were finally successful in taking Tyre. And uh, the worst of all was Alexander the Great. But, but that's kind of another story. There's a lot to be learned about the end times from the city of Tyre. It figures prominently in Ezekiel chapters 26 through 28. It figures very prominently in Revelation 18, where you have the three groups, the, the Babylon, the kings of the earth, or the presidents, you know, the leaders of the nations, and the merchants of the earth, which usually we just kind of skip over, like we miss them completely. And yet our world today, our civilization today, is, is very largely run by these, these vast, I guess we even call them mega corporations. So those three elements that are foreseen in, in Revelation 18, there they are back in, in ancient time, and, and here is a, an oracle against one of them, Tyre. So interesting if you want to study further into those kinds of questions. There's some insight for us here. This city, they, they prided themselves on their wealth, on their wisdom. They thought they were just, you know, we're like, we're the smart people, take it from us. And uh, of course, God has a burden against them because, yeah, when you think you're pretty smart and you're you're in opposition to the God of, of heaven and earth, that's, that's usually going to end very badly for you. So anyway, that's worth studying. Go over there and look at Revelation 18. We're living in a time leading right up to that. But back to this oracle about Tyre. The wealth of Tyre doesn't impress God. Their pride doesn't impress him. They're going to be destroyed. And that's because they're, it's anti-human. It's anti-human to be prideful. It's anti-human to be focused on the material. We are, of course, you see in the Bible, shows us we are designed and created as spiritual persons, spiritual beings. Sure, we have, we have our bodies, uh, but we are in, intended to be spiritual persons. You can be spiritual in a human body. You can, you can. Just, just be careful when you're in the store and they want to sell you every kind of poison for your body. Watch out. Fruits and vegetables, unmodified, that's, that's, that's the best stuff. So according to Zechariah, Tyre is going down. It's going to be destroyed. And of course, they maybe should think about repenting. Uh, there was an oracle in another place in, against Nineveh. And there was no mention of repentance. And yet the people repented and God relented from what he was going to do. So these things are all pretty much conditional. But of course, very rarely do people turn and return to the God of heaven. Well, Tyre trusted in her own wealth. Tyre trusted in its mighty fortifications. It was a wildly materialistic state and they need to humble themselves because otherwise it's going to be very hard to find their way. Actually, Tyre is not unlike, not very unlike our world today in which people are just busy, just totally stimulating themselves, sitting on soft couches, you know, poking cupcakes into their face, uh, watching junk on the screen. I I'm not against eating things that are delicious, but I'm saying don't forget that God has a spiritual purpose for us. We were created to worship. We're moral creatures to worship the God of heaven. And so there's where we'll find hope. There's where we'll find fulfillment. And so even though we're in this, this world of mirages, let's keep our eye on the King of Kings. Mm -hmm.